All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for, for being here. Uh, welcome to our September 2nd Reparations Committee meeting. Uh, my name is Alden Braithwaite. I'm the chair. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, is there a motion to approve the, the uh, August 5th meeting minutes? Move approval of August 5th meeting minutes. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Um, I'm hoping you all had an opportunity to read through the copious notes. Any comments, edits, or changes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Meeting moves are approved. Next up, we have a public comment. We have two speakers, uh, Tina Payton as well as Brenda Greer. Ms. Payton. Get on the guest. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Tina Payton, and uh, I'm here to make public comment. Of course, uh, I will be advocating for cash payment. Um, so I see on the here that you are discussing money used to support uh, administrative costs. Um, it says possibly third party. Uh, I'd like to know who the third party is. People should not be paid to assist, advise, or consult about reparations. Any party on the committee or participating should be voluntarily, voluntary or not at all. If you are concerned about being fair and equitable, this should not be a money-making opportunity for any participants. Any expenses for supplies, such as paper, copy materials, printer ink, should be document and available to the public for review and comments. And possibly this money could be taken out of the donated money and not directly out of the reparations fund. Transparency. All awarded money should be documented and made public, such as the recipient, the date of such award, the amount of the award, and how were they approved for the reparations. Also, a third party should, unrelated to any here, one here in Evanston, should be picking the participants for a fair and equitable selection. Thank you, Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Brenda Greer. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm going to be very brief. First, I'd like to say that I hope going forward with this uh, reparations, that there will be compensations made for people that are 60 and 70 years old, because as it stands now, there is nothing and no way that a per person, a senior 60 to 70, will compensate from this housing program. Second, I hope that in the future, you will set these sessions up on Zoom or call-in, because there are a lot of people that are at work, that live in Evanston, and that would qualify, and they aren't able to be at these sessions. And even though they can see it later, if they want to speak, there's no way that they can speak or voice their opinion in regards to the program. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have items for consideration. Uh, item A is an update on the financial report that's in your packet in front of you. I'll give the financial update. So as of September 1st, the city has received uh, $26,180 in donations to the reparations fund. And this re represents an, um, an increase of $871 from August. 
thank you. Uh, thank you so much for Tashik. And then for the members of the community, I'm sure you've all read the packet, but for anyone that would watch this video later, uh, there is a packet that's posted on our City of Evanston's website on the reparations page uh, with, with our meeting information. And in there on page seven is a breakdown, monthly breakdown of the donations year to date. You have a question? Yes. Uh, I have a comment regarding the, uh, the donations and uh, follow-up with the, um, so I know that we've talked before about preparing a note or letter, one of um, gratitude, but also to make sure that they are signed up for our newsletters and receiving updates so that they are aware of um, how their contributions are benefiting the program and what's up next. And I could be helpful if staff is at capacity in preparing something like that, <clears throat> drafting it. That would be great. And also want to include that that note would include tax deduction, so it's tax deductible. So yes. um, we always put that in the link, so in that letter, just so they are informed that they can use this as a receipt mm -hmm. of, um, for their tax purposes as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your report. Next up, we have item B, which is the review of our first restorative housing information session. And I know, Kim, you're going to take that. And before you speak, I just wanted to you know, respond to something. So in terms of our meeting dates and times, um, all you have to do is look at the city of Evanston's calendar to understand how many times we meet and how many subjects we, we cover. And so our meeting uh, time in the morning is just based on the availability of the volunteers that you see in front of you as well as our city staff as well as resources and so it, it's it's challenging and if you notice all of our information sessions are in the evening and so you have morning meetings it's once a month we have what one two three four information sessions that you're going to hear from now Ms. Greer so our last was on September 7th. The next one is going to be Wednesday the 15th. No, our next yeah, one is no. September 7th. So we're August 30th, which was Monday, was our first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, just that's what's remaining. That's what's remaining. OK, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. So okay. September 7th, and I don't think we can say that enough times. And then we have another one on September 15th at Fleetwood. And then another one September 23rd. Um, at the Levy Center, and then the last one, September 21st, will be virtual, yeah. just yeah. to make that clear. Mm -hmm. And as well, I think we had a little bit of misinformation at the first uh, committee meeting, so all members of the committee are, are you know, able to attend without any conflict, and I also encourage you to attend. I mean, we're going to hear a review of the last session. I thought it went very well. Kimberly, we had a really good um, crowd, keeping in mind that we are adhering to COVID uh, protocols because they are in person. Yes. I just want to add, um, for those that will see this later or if you want to take this information back, I would argue that the info sessions are a great place to come with your feedback and questions. Staff made available uh, note cards, also a time for um, questions that were not on the agenda that we can bring back to the committee. The committee will be considering that comment and that feedback and is inviting that comment and that feedback at the info sessions, one of them being scheduled virtually. Correct. Uh, so thank you and thank you all uh, who were able to attend. Our August 30th meeting uh, was held at Friendship and I will again thank um, our pastor Desire Webb for allowing us to host that first informational meeting. Um, and because of COVID, we we're asking everyone to register. Uh, we had uh, online registration. If people are not able to register online themselves, if they contact 311, uh, they will register you as well um, on your behalf. And we just ask that people register just so we can ensure that we are at the capacity that we have advertised and that we prepared adequately for ensuring everyone's safety while we meet in person. Yes. So um, mm -hmm. with the, with, uh, and I know the locations vary. So it doesn't look like we're hitting capacity at some of the locations at many, you know, are, are, what do, sure. do we have? And then if someone is registering in, at a location where capacity has been reached, will they then be 
So if they are, sure, so if they are registering online, the way that our online process works, if once we hit that capacity number, that option is not available. So we don't, so it immediately goes off, so that way we're not over committing space. Uh, but every location uh, outside of Friendship is available as of today. Uh, I think the majority of people are looking at coming in person. We do have a, a large presence that have opted for the virtual um, webinar. Um, but a, a number of people who attended the meeting uh, was very happy that they came in person because they just wanted to be able to ask questions and, and not you know, do it over Zoom. So we're just trying to be mindful of COVID and those concerns, so there is a limitation. But we, that's why we have four uh, sessions in person be, to allow for a capacity. We will have over 200 people registered in person um, but at the conclusion of this, um, at the conclusion of our info sessions, with uh, up to 300 people able to register uh, online as well. So, I, I mean, we, right now, as you see in the packet, we have over 200 people who have registered both online and in person. And um, again, I think that intimate conversation really was helpful for people to ask a lot of questions in that hour and a half that I think in a larger setting probably wouldn't be as easier to do. So I think people really appreciate the, the more intimate one-on-one -on -one kind of conversations that we had on Monday. So with that being said, uh, we again encourage people to attend. We walk everyone through the application. So what we've done is print out the application. The application cannot be uh, a, a paper document just for security purposes with the type of sensitive information that we're asking. Uh, all information through the um, application is encrypted so that we can ensure that there's no you know, security issues that could arise uh, to the best of our ability, as we know with cyber security is, is front of mind. But we did print out the application, and what we did at the meeting is literally just walk everyone through the application and then identify how and where they can uh, locate resources uh, to um, provide the documentation that's needed. I would say the interesting feedback that I, we received was how simple people realized it was. They said, wow, this is not as complicated as I thought it was gonna be. And I think that's a testament to uh, staff really listening to the community feedback and taking the time over the summer really testing and making sure we were asking the appropriate questions to get to the end result, which was to ensure people were able to participate in the program. So I think with that, you're gonna see more individuals uh, engaging in the application process and not being so uh, turned, right, turned off by the process as we try to implement a fair and equitable um, implementation. Thank you for your report. I know that Oliver Simmons and Ms. Lockhart were both there. I don't know if you wanted to provide some feedback in terms of what you experienced. Um, I just wanted to say being there was, I was glad to be there for a number of reasons. I came in not as a committee member. I came in as a citizen purposely. Um, thank goodness for the mask. And um, the turnout was excellent, I thought. And also the presentation was really wonderful in the sense that it was very clear and concise. And I think that a lot of um, concerns were addressed. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, as we continue these community sessions that, you know, there will be a better understanding of the community of what this acts is, this exactly what it is, because there's just so many rumors about what it is. And the fact that it is a housing, a restorative housing program cannot be emphasized enough. And the fact that there are three areas to achieve to receive the award. So I, I think that the session was excellent. And so I look forward to attending all of them and also seeing the turnout from our community. Thank you. Well, you're welcome to be a committee member at one of those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> we, would love your, we would love your help. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just mm. great job to mm -hmm. staff and um, everything that you delivered is very coherent. And thank you to all the residents that are sacrificing the time to mm -hmm. come out and get the facts and the mm -hmm. details. And um, those that are on table, we really hope that you do log in online.
Kimberly, by any chance, did you bring any extra informational packets, packets with you? Do we have uh, any extra? I did not bring the packet itself, um, but we can make those available if anyone here needs one. Okay. Okay, we can, we can run upstairs and get it after the mm -hmm. conclusion okay. of the meeting. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, are there any other questions for any other members? Oh, mm -hmm. and Mr. Um, I apologize, you were there as well. There so. uh, will there ever be answers to these frequently asked questions? Mm -hmm. So that, do they have to come to the meeting or contact you to get these answers? So the questions are in the packet, packet. today that was collected. We mm -hmm. are looking for some support to get those answers collected because okay. some of that direction from the committee mm -hmm. that needs to give us guidance, but things that are more direct that we can answer as staff, we will answer them and upload it to the, uh, our website. With, the website already has frequently asked questions, so we will just keep continually to add additional questions onto, those, um, onto the website as new questions come, uh, occur. Uh, but those that we need more guidance from the committee, we will bring it to your attention for direction. Okay, because several of these were answered. That's the only mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did a very good job. So there are a couple here that I still have concerns about that, that maybe we need to address. And I would add that at the coming uh, info sessions, if we have Q&A printed out for residents mm -hmm. to have. We, we do. Add. It's in the packet. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. Or the updated. Oh, yes. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. well, anytime we update yeah, the packet. Yeah, as we update, yes. OK, definitely. We can know that. Is there anything else that you all saw that we could improve on that could be helpful even in the packet? I mean, we were very intentional about making sure we had a paper document for people. Yeah. But if there's anything else that you felt, please reach out to myself and to Sheik, and we will address them as we continue through the process of the additional informational sessions. I'll add oh. one more thing, and I don't know if it ended up making it in the packet or not, but I had um, community feedback uh, recommending that the application is um, able to be completed by mobile device, which it is, and also one other thing, that it's savable. So if someone, you know, gets stuck, and um, just for the community that had concerns about that, those things have been considered. We will add those to the FAQs, because both of those are able to be accomplished. Perfect. Thank you. And I just wanted to say there were quite a few questions about first time ownership. Yeah. I and I think if there's some way we can address that, I mean, I don't yep. know if we can do that before November 5th, but if we can address that to help those citizens who are interested but may not be ready yet because they haven't been in the process before. Yeah. So to that, I made the call um, to the, it's the Dearborn Realtors Group, a black real estate trade association mm -hmm. that did a community wealth day for us here. Okay. Uh, it was just before COVID and um, they will come and do another session and okay. it goes heavy on first time home buyers, okay. refi, all kind of financial right. products. And we had, I don't know, I believe there are about 200 people it that attended that. I remember that. Pre-qualifications on site, folks that are homeowners now from that event. So we'll schedule that ASAP. Great. Um, all right. all I mean, I'm going to always say alderman. Okay, I'm always fine. alderman. <laughs> alderman, <laughs> alderman. Tell me, once an alderman, you always, always an alderman. alderman. That's right. That's right. Um, Premier, uh, Simmons, do it's just as long as you work with staff. I, I mean, we can yeah. look at locations again. I think the previous one was held here, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. due to COVID, this is probably not the, lo the right location. So okay. I would like to work with you so we can identify early, so we can secure a space at a city facility um, that's accessible. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't get done without you. So <laughs> you could pretty much be thinking now about where you want us to go, okay. you know, and then um, we'll go from there. Great, thank you. Awesome. All right. Any other comments or questions before we move on? All right, seeing none, we'll move forward. Next we have, uh, keep slipping back. Item C is the administrative cost to support the reparation program. Staff is requesting the committee consider funding sources for the administrative costs that may occur during the program. And that is on the memos on page 11. So I actually, you know, had a conversation with Kimberly uh, prior to this, this meeting. And there is some assistance in just the, you know, our last session that we have 
that we had this past, what was that, Tuesday? Monday. Monday. <laughs> My mind is You've so been clouded. in a lot of meetings this week. I know. <laughs> so this past Monday, we had that conversation, and there were questions from, you know, members of our community. And because this is so specific and we don't have a dedicated staff to assist with that, um, one of our community partners, Evans to Own It, who are they're assisting with hosting the informational meetings, came up with the idea that we could possibly train individuals yeah. just to be able to help people, yeah. our seniors, with, with, with this process. Okay. And hopefully they would be individuals that our seniors uh, would recognize. Mm -hmm. And in the conversation with uh, Pastor Webb, it was suggested that we would have our pastors, who are already our community partners, yeah. not only this effort, they also assist with our youth employment program and other activities the, throughout the community to help appoint someone or, or some people from their church to assist. And so here's the thought and idea that I think for members of the committee and those that are here in the public is this is an ongoing process. So right now we're just at phase one with our housing. There will be other opportunities that will be birthed in the next several months as we continue to meet as a committee and as you continue to listen to feedback in the public and more importantly as we continue to get uh, additional dollars coming into our budget so I think that it's important that we do provide the support from our seniors I think it's important that the people who are assisting them are, are folks that they recognize in the community and also look like us so um, that's where I will stop talking and can, did you want to share a couple of notes and then we'll open it up to comments from the committee yeah and so what lastly is that from our experience volunteerism is great we appreciate that but we also know that doesn't yield consistency mm -hmm. and so to ensure that we can say there's going to be office hours at a location and have someone dedicate that time uh, we find just in past practices that a stipend or some sort of call uh, some sort of benefit to that individual has helped when we're looking for community members to support uh, because we recognize that this is not you know this is a, a lot of af this is a lot of work it's not as simple as just um, you know, clicking a button. And so it would be helpful to expand our scope. We have the support of the library as we've discussed at the last meeting. And I think from the feedback you all have given us as well, like having the community, the community members engaged in this is so, so important. And so this is just a way that we are acknowledging that this is work. And, um, and so to have this way of giving them some support a stipend or hourly, you know, figure that would be something you all determine. I think would be very beneficial for the community as well. Um, I, I just would really like a little bit more clarity on um, what exactly we're looking for support for, because I think that you hear administrative costs and you think it's administrative tasks, but I also hear volunteer or support, which is really in a different way to support either with the application, support with sharing knowledge, support at the community meetings. Yes. You know, what exactly are you looking for? All the above well, is administrative yeah. tasks. So <laughs> all, that, gonna... all the above is administrative tasks, okay. even though you may not see it, it's staff that both myself and Tashik are sharing right now. Okay. And once the floodgates open with applications, we are gonna get overwhelmed and we recognize that. Okay. And so to train up community members as well as other staff members in this in the organization we just want to be able to identify people and have a set schedule so that we can put that out in the community where you can go to apply so that we don't um, also inundate 311 mm -hmm. uh, so we just want to start preparing but it's all of that my goal is that these people who are whoever identified are tr able to be trained and knowledgeable on the whole guidelines process, mm -hmm. understand what the next steps are, how to support people if they're looking for information, and then even in addition to, uh, if it even is something that we want to do, continue to have community um, informational sessions in, as the application process is open. And mm -hmm. so all those things need to happen, and 
I'm going to be honest with you, with what's going on in the city manager's office, uh, we need that support. Mm -hmm. And so, but um, would they also we, be helping with ex filling out applications? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's what yeah. I didn't yeah. hear. So yeah. that's yeah. I just I think so it, we have to be very above. you know clear on what we're looking. Yeah. We will and create so, a job support. description. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that way you will see. That way everybody yeah. knows. And if I can respond to what Bonnie said, and then mm -hmm. I'll call you next is mm -hmm. you work with seniors. I mean mm -hmm. that's your I life do. and that's your passion. So you understand with. The importance of everything support for exactly them. And, and support that we can trust more doubt because mm, I mean right. some of these the the application itself and I'm sure everybody okay. around this table has taken a chance to either mm -hmm. help a relative a friend or a neighbor whether it's city services mm -hmm. or just access to any type of service mm -hmm. here in Evanston and, and beyond this information I, I can read through and say is very basic but once you start to get into someone's paycheck stubs mm -hmm. and other things we have to be really careful on mm -hmm. who Who's is assisting mm -hmm. and I think it's prudent and, and it's like a, we should be responsible by making sure that the people mm -hmm. who are training we identify them train up event identify vet and train the individuals to provide this assistance both with this program and again beyond I mean we're just right now at four percent we still have nine million and six hundred thousand dollars to go mm -hmm. and those individuals once identified i think would help keep us yeah. moving things throughout the process okay. did you want to say something oh mm -hmm. i'm sorry mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this first of all because um when i go out and talk uh, this is a question that i have uh, have come up okay. and so i'm glad to be able to answer this more concretely um having said that i've got two questions first of all if somebody wants to, can can the there's the stipend component. Are we talking about running a possible volunteer component alongside of, I'm, I'm guessing so, because everyone loves free, if that's available. Um, and I'm wondering if in that sense, there's an opportunity if, for example, a different group wanted to uh, staff a day of assisting with the online applications at the library or something like that, or you know, if, if they could break that down in that volunteer component. So that's one question. And then my second question is for some, I understand it may not possibly be appropriate, both practically and comfort wise, to have this on the, with the application assistance, but as far as some of the admin assistance that you need, is there um, an opportunity to speak to ETHS and some of their volunteer programs that they have. I don't know what the lead time it would be with getting that and getting some students involved with some of the, perhaps some of that like the nuts, like the paperworky admin side. I can I can see how perhaps that might not be as desirable online. Sure. Uh, or, I mean, when I say online at the uh, yeah. uh, at the library. Right. Um, for security reasons, et cetera, right. and training and all that. And, and I don't, I mean, uh, with other projects, maybe you have an idea of what the lead time might be for getting yeah. the high schoolers involved. But intergenerational yeah. exchange is, I think, wonderful. I would love to get the high schoolers involved. And I think their involvement should be really on the community engagement level with regards to another part of this conversation we're going to talk about today is about community participation. I think having them engage in that process, what that looks like, yet yeah, we have to talk to you all to determine. Um, so uh, there is a space for our intergenerational inter engagement and interaction. Mm -hmm. I think from the administrative standpoint, we're just looking for uh, adults who have the, the ability and the time commitment because we recognize that this is going to be a lot of during the day when students are probably in school. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that we involve them in some point in this work. And I think there is opportunities for that. Thank you. Yeah. And one of the things that I want to suggest to you, Ms. Barbara, is so as a committee member, not only do you get to ask questions, but you also make, get to make suggestions. So as you're listening, <laughs> yeah. as you're listening, I mean, that's what, we're, that's what we're here for. And as you are hearing this wonderful feedback from the individuals that you're in touch with, I mean, Next, next meeting, we're just, this is up for discussion, this, this meeting we have, I just wanted, we wanted to plant the seed, and then hopefully by the next meeting, we come back with, with recommendations, excuse me, recommendations that we can pass through our legal department to get this implemented sooner rather than, sooner rather than later. So I think your, your questions are well placed, and next we have, I just wanted Robert, to, followed by um, Carlos. Remind, remind everyone again that NAACP has 
made themselves available to um, support in that role. And um, I would imagine they have capacity within their organization. They have a fifth ward office which inside the family focused building. So just wanted to put that out there. And then also, as we're thinking about it, um, I'm less enthusiastic about using the um, program funds for administrative costs because there is a lot of interest and appetite out there to support this work and make sure that it's successful. So if we had a budget to understand kind of what kind of dollars are we talking about, that would be helpful even in having an informed opinion about yes to using reparations funds or if we can raise it or if we can find a partner to fund it. But I completely would agree with a stipend based um, um, agreement to get consistency in the support that we have. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about a stipend, but what I would suggest is that we have several organizations in this community that have the wealth of knowledge. We have the retired attorneys, we have retired CPAs. I would suggest you go to the churches, the Panhellenic Council, and there's several other organizations, the Ministerial Alliance, and ask if there are any retired people in their church especially. And then my second uh, concern is, when we have these meetings, uh, will there be uh, computers available for the people to put this information in when it comes time? And we can do a cubicle or something like that for privacy purposes, but um, I think we have a wealth in this community of enough retired people uh, who are still competent and have time rather than to work. I know I don't expect them to buy the paper. I don't expect them to buy the computers. But for the time for complete this, most of these seniors are thoroughly confused. Even though it was easy, the packet that I saw, mm -hmm. they still have several concerns. So if there was an organization where we could have these meetings, like a church, or one set up by the NAACP at uh, Foster or Family Focus, I would feel a lot more comfortable and ask for volunteers from these agencies to assist mm -hmm. us in this. I think this is a community requirement. We shouldn't have to pay you to help elderly people in this community, okay? Uh, you live in this community, we all benefit from it. There are enough of us in this community that are capable enough to sit down with you in the confidence and to complete these applications as quickly and easily as possible at accessible places in the community. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. So Kimberly, I think what's going to be helpful just listening to everything that was shared around the uh, table is coming up with a job description and assessing what those needs are and concerns. I think Ms. Barbara, you shared some concerns that you're hearing and allowed that to drive the description of what we're looking for and who we're looking for, whether it's a, a volunteer or a, or a paid stipend. Um, I do think that if there is and there will be costs to do this program. So let's be clear about that to members of the committee and this public. It doesn't just happen. Um, this, this being new and innovative has not been built into our city of Evanston's budget. And so for those costs, you know, Kimberly, we need to start identifying them and they have to come from, from somewhere. And I think it's a good, it's a great investment if it's gonna help our community um, I'll say that again, it is a wonderful investment if it's going to help move our, our community forward in this repair work. And we just have to be you know, very diligent as well as responsible in how we allocate those funds. So Kim, do you think by the next meeting is that enough time to come up with some description? And again, that's just for our first repair. We still have a long way to go, folks. Bonnie, you wanted to say something? I, I, I just wanted to you know, comment on what Mr. Sutton said. I, I agree with you that as a community, you know, we should be willing to volunteer, but for consistency and training and a clear expectations, I think that having a position where some funds are available is important. I also want to agree with um, Alderman Simmons in that it sh should not come from the program if possible. I mean, I just think that we should be able to find a source other than the reparations money. So part of that is finding a source and finding dollars is just going to our community partners who are willing to donate. I mean, we, we have a, a donation fund set up at the city yeah, and we've also, we've talked about this before, we also have 
a partnership with the community foundation. So I, I, I'm less concerned about where the money comes from, and I'm more concerned about meeting the needs of the seniors that we all understand are there. Are there. <laughs> right, and right. the conversation continues with the budget, yeah. you know, so that we know, you know, if, if we know where we're at and right. how practical it is. But I do think, like, we have to model the model and everything. And if yeah. we're asking the black community to um, deliver, administer, manage this fund, continue volunteering, like we have for so long served um, and advocated for ourselves at our sacrifice. So if we, 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 we fund and we um, pay partners and, and consultants for everything else, um, so I would be in support, I would expect that we would do that, um, and, and we should be able to find the funds to, to do that. One last question, um, just for, so there is the 3%, which is where the programming money is coming from. But then we have this private donations that people have brought in. So that is what Tashik has just reported out, the donation fund. So I don't know if that could be considered as where the funding comes from, as it's not where we're utilizing. I mean, it's all in the same pot, but we are only utilizing the 3% so far of revenue that's already come in to pay for the housing program. Um, not the donations so far. So I just along along I wonder what what um, rep, were those donations given as general donations? What representations were made to the organizations or individuals who made those donations? Um, because I could I, I could imagine that that would um, either free up or ties that's that that may constrain us or. They're not restricted, but go ahead. Um, yeah, they're not, they were, it was a contribution to the reparation fund, but we never talked about using this fund to deliver the program. So I think that if we did use private donations in full transparency, we would need to create a new ask specifically for program management to um, compensate and stipend these volunteers or, or workers in the community so that folks that did give, some gave out of their sacrifice thinking that it was gonna touch a family and impact their wealth based on the way the program was articulated. But I don't think that's an unreasonable ask. I think the community would be um, excited to help us move this program along. And I don't think it's unreasonable. I'm not intimidated by that ask at all. All right, we'll come back for more at the next meeting. But we just Perfect. wanted to start the conversation. Great. All right, let's continue to move forward. Uh, the last piece is, uh, is uh, economic development incentives uh, and community participation. Um, so I shared this out at our last meeting. You know, we're, we're really close to passing our first housing and to give our staff just lead time now. Uh, the other part of the ordinance is focusing on eco economic development. That's that is that, that is a definite need for our, for our black community. Um, so if we look at for discussion, there should is the map in here? She, no, the map isn't in there. We didn't add that to the packet. Okay. Because it wouldn't have come up in black and white very well. Fair enough. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, but we will share with the committee, and we'll also post it online. Okay. It's what you're referencing. Yeah. So it's just to give some thought to economic development and how we better serve our, our black community, excuse me, our, our businesses that serve our black community within, within the red line area. Um, so that was the thought process going into the meeting. We mentioned at the last meeting, um, we're gonna bring it up again we still have uh, a lot of work to do just delivering the housing, but I just wanted yeah. to put that on the top of everyone's mind for consideration. Any initial um, thoughts? Please. I, I have uh, some, some I, I have some connection with some um, people in finance who've been working on um, initiatives, uh, there was an, a national paper expanding black businesses and so forth. I wonder if um, some type of presentation, if I could arrange them to give some type of presentation 
Um, there was a really uh, comprehensive paper put out on it, but I think it, I think it was like 2019, so it may sure. need to be updated. But um, could maybe could definitely could bring together a few of those folks who actually authored the paper, and wondered if we could have them, if it would be helpful, and, and, and or what would be useful to have them come speak to us, to have them. Absolutely. Uh, to see what they would be willing to do to perhaps look in depth at the community in Evanston and to, to by nature of they're in finance. So I, I think we could probably get them to volunteer. <laughs> so I would say yes, yes, expertise. yes. I can't promise that. But right. um, and then there are also some connections that they would have to some of the um, uh, black consultants in some of the firms like BCG, McKinsey, who, and I know they often look for pro bono projects. I wonder um, if, you know, that's yes. something that we'd have an appetite for just to maybe start with the presentation. Yes. And then I could look at some, an, a, some resources for some of those, you know, consulting firms and see what might be available. Yes, to all of the above. Um, I would like if you could share with the committee the list that the community prepared uh, when we began this work that has uh, recommendations for uh, reparations priorities um, when we started this work to make sure that those recommendations aren't lost in um, the expansion and they are considered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think, as you're stating, a professional presentation would be incredible. We had something similar. We had the State of Black Housing Report that was prepared by a housing policy specialist. Um, so that would be appropriate. But let's not um, you know, dismiss the hard work of residents that participated when we first committed to this program. And that's, I, that's a great lead in because I was just going to, I mean, part of that dialogue in the memo was about what the community participation moving forward is going to look like. I think, you know, that was started in 2019 when we had the initial town hall meetings uh, that occurred, and that's how the housing program and, of course, economic development came out of it. But now we have a lot of new voices who weren't a part of the conversation then who have not, um, you know, been, you know, really have been engaged but on the perimeter, I guess, more observing. So trying to come up with a more equitable way of community engagement in this process and creating a plan for our, our committee to be intentional about getting that feedback from the community that sometimes is not always at present um, to our meetings or had not participated in that previous um, iteration of a town hall meeting. So I would love to work with at least a couple of community mem or committee members to create a strategy for us to move forward so that it's a transparent process because this, that data is, is there. We have that data for you all to kind of look at and then we can build on top of that new voices. And that's even involving the high school, maybe having a focus group with them to talk to them about reparations and repair and, and what they see from the economic standpoint. Um, that will be something though we want to have to like actually plan and, and put together and then present to committees to see if that's something we want to move forward with. As you all have in these presentations and getting the thought process behind it, um, because that, I think, what we did, the housing is exactly the same. We had that conversation that really gave some in-depth knowledge. So when we were talking to the community members, we were connecting those dots that was very helpful. Did you I just want to add that we, that there is no, um, you know, we don't have to go directly into economic development either. So mm -hmm. there is incredible amount of need um, in housing. Seems to be a lot of interest in this initial $25,000 direct benefit. As we make these discussions, you know, for consideration could be more of the housing benefit or maybe we move to the economic development. But these are things that we have to discuss. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think that we should start with seeing that first, that initial list, because there was a lot of thought put into that on behalf mm -hmm. of the community members that participated at that time. Mm -hmm. Good, good feedback. Right. Carlos? And since this is a novice program, I think that we should uh, try to look at every opportunity for the community to be involved. I hope, if nothing else, it's my uh, vision 
that what we're doing here will be the boiler plate for reparations, not only in Congress, but throughout the United States of America. And the more opportunity that people have to participate, uh, I think they will agree. And also, it gives us as members of the committee to address the kickback or the backlash from this kind of procedure that if this is something that's going to be put together by presentations, which I think is wonderful, but more importantly, we're the first people doing this. So we're going to make some mistakes, but I think we always should look, as Robin said, on a budget first, and then secondly, uh, use all the resources that we have in the community that are available, because what we're doing now will have to be reflected probably a thousand more times in this country. So we're not going to get some things right, but I think and I encourage you to still keep options available that will assist you in your work as we proceed with this. It's your work. <laughs> I was just going to, I was, if, before we go to all the meetings, I just want to say that in terms of what you shared, Mr. Sutton, I think it's valuable feedback. I would make just two edits, and one thing is it's our collective goal that we all share as well as our residents that have taken the time. And then I, th I think the use of the word kickback, you, I would probably replace that with our community feedback that we continue to solicit both here in these public meetings as well as the one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, that you have. Thank you so much for, for your thoughts, uh, Alvin Simmons. We can't go without addressing the fact that we have to have a, um, a viable path towards whatever remedy that we have, which means that we have to have direction from our law department as well. And the beauty is we have, you know, an attorney on this committee, but we have to develop that local case, that specific Evanston initiative that creates a harm for economic development redress. I'm certain that it's there, but we have to be doing that work parallel to one another so that the remedy is in line with the injury and we have a solid case like we do for housing. That's why we are the only city to have progressed so far because our law department and our staff, our community has been very intentional about um, directly correlating the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So All with right. that being said, uh, I do would like to have ability to work with a couple members on the committee on strategizing a community sure. engagement plan that we can then bring back to the committee in October, hopefully. Kimberly, you had a great recommendation um, before we took our break on some sense of a participatory process. Uh, yeah, yeah, process. So I look forward to continuing that conversation. There's money attached to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, either way, if it's if it's a participatory process, which was a play on participatory budgeting, or if it's more one-on-one -on -one focus group dialogue to get feedback. We just need to have a plan so that we can share with the community so that there's, I think from the feedback we have been have received so far, a lot of the community felt like they weren't a part of it. And we're not gonna hit everyone, we recognize that, but we can at least show the efforts and the work we've done similar to what we did in 2019 when we, we held those um, community meetings. And so um, that's all I ask is, is we have the time we have the time, so we, we have more time than we, than we realize, and so I'd rather take this time and be thoughtful and, and figure out how can we do a meaningful engagement process, be it participatory or other. So I just need two members, and thank you. Okay. I'm gonna be there. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll work awesome. it out, figure it out, and we will definitely, yeah. thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. All right. So uh, seeing, oh. I'll help. I, I, I'll help too. <laughs> but we'll you figure need. out yes. who can it help because right yes. now I think more. I just need a couple, just two. Okay. So um, I will take Carlos and Bonnie, um, and then and we then will rotate we'll get, the others. We'll, the, we'll work. Yeah. I was going to get feedback. Yeah. <laughs> we'll work on our list. And yes. So yes. 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 This is awesome. Yeah. So, so we don't have any other items in in front of us. I just wanted to. Uh, remind our, our committee members as well as those that are here in the public and we'll see this video later that our next committee meeting is October 7th from 9 to 1030. Um, so thank you all for being here, being here on, on time. Um, our next housing information sessions will be Tuesday, September 7th. That's from 6 to 730. 
Wednesday the 15th. I should probably give the locations. Bethel. 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 Thank you for calling them out. Bethel. Wednesday the 15th from 6 to 7.30. Is it Fleetwood? Uh, September 21st, and that's from noon to 1.30, is going to be virtual. And then Thursday the 23rd from 6 to 7.30 will be where? Levy Center. Levy Center. So again, reminding the members of uh, the public that you do have to register online. You can do so by going to our City of Evanston's uh, .org reparations page. As well, you can contact 311. And again, we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can uh, to keep all the members of our community safe, particularly those most vulnerable, our seniors. So with that being said, oops, and then the housing application date closes November 5th. When does it open? It's it opens the September 21st. All right. So I just want to thank all the, the, the members of our community for coming out, uh, carving out the time to be present. Uh, we appreciate your feedback, comments, uh, scrutiny. Uh, so thank you, as well as the members of the committee for being present, and of course, our staff, Michelle, Tashik, and, and Kimberly, for all your hard work and commitment. Is there a motion to Can adjourn? You I Will did you not. Please? Do you want to stand and just share who you are? I thank you so much. Stand so. Um, my name is Michelle Hempel Ozuribo, and I'm Deputy City Attorney at City of Evanston. Really so nice Ev to meet you. Thank yes, you. so <laughs> Michelle has strong Evanston roots. She comes with a lot of experience, and we are really blessed Did and lucky to have you. She has Evanston roots, nice. strong Evanston roots, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we're happy to have you as part of our, not only our staff, but also to join us here this morning. So thank, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. If there aren't any other comments or questions, then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.